Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlog here, and this lesson is our second part of 4.2, uh, Constructing and Writing Arithmetic Sequences. Okay, so don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Okay, so here we go. Uh, write an explicit rule and function notation for each arithmetic sequence right here. I have some company next uh, through the walls. I don't know if you can hear him talking, so it's my brother-in-law. Uh, the cost of whitewater rafting trip depends on the number of passengers. The base fee is 50 bucks, and the cost per passenger is 25 bucks. The graph shows the sequence. Okay, so over here, they give us this graph right here, and so this bottom number down here is the number of passengers. This number over here is the cost right here. So this number right here, this is one. This is, if this is going up, looks like by 25, so here's 50, here's 75, so this is 175 right there, okay? And then so the next one is 2 to 100, just added uh, 25, 3, 125, and finally 4, 150. Okay, so let's represent this sequence in a table right here. So the number of passengers is this right here. This is our x-axis. Here it's our n-axis right here. So the numbers are going to be uh, these numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then, and then the cost is going to be these numbers. This is our cost, how high it goes up. So 75, 100, 125, and 150 right there. Okay. All right, so let's find the common difference. Okay, so the common difference is how much do they increase? Well, they're increasing by 25, so D equals 25. All right, so write an explicit rule. Well, there's our formula for the explicit rule. Remember this from the last lesson? Here's our first term plus N minus 1 times D. So our first term is 75 and D is 25, so let's go ahead and just slide that up and then substitute in 75 and 25. Okay, your book would like you to leave it like that, but I like to distribute that uh, 25 through because I think when you clean it up, it looks better, you guys. 75 minus 25 is 50. So 25n plus 50 is our nth term. This says our nth term right here, okay? Your book would probably write it like that. They put the 25 in front right there. So I just think it looks cleaner like that, don't you? And so if it said find your 90th term, no problem. I just plug in 90 right there, 25 times 90 and then add 50 to that, okay? All right, so the number of seats per row in an auditorium depends on which row it is in. The first row has six seats, the second row has nine seats, the third row has 12 seats, and so on and so on and so on. So the graph over here shows a sequence. The first row has six seats, so over one, up six. The second row, over two, this says down here, rows. This says the number of seats, so over two, up nine over 3 up 12 over 4 up 14 okay this is our domain 1 2 3 4 this is our range 6 9 12 15 so when we put those in the table there's the 1 2 3 4 there's the 6 9 12 15 all right so let's find the common difference well that is plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 so d equals 3 so write an explicit rule, okay? Well, there's our formula. We know our first term is 6. We know that D is 3, so we just plug that in, and we get um, uh, F of N equals 3N plus 5, okay? Your book would probably write it like this. F of N equals 6 plus 3 times N minus 1. I put the 3 over here, but you could put the 3 over here right there, you guys. But doesn't this look cleaner than this? I think so. But if you see this in your book, they just, just uh, I'm just distributing the three through. So if it said find your 90th term, this one would be way easier. Plug in 90 right here. Three times 90 is 270 plus three is 273. It'd be 273. All right. So compare the graph of the function f of x equals three times uh, or three plus five times x minus one, and the graph of the sequence f of n equals 3 plus 5 times n minus 1. Okay, when it's a sequence, then n are whole numbers, you guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When it's a function, uh, f of x, uh, there is no restrictions. 1, 2, 3, 4 could be everything. So when it's written as f of x, the domain and range have no restrictions, and thus it's all real numbers. So the graph of the function is a line. It's a, it's a line it's if we connected all those dots. And if when it's a sequence, it's a discrete set of points. Discrete means that there's separate points right there. So every point on the graph of the sequence ends up being on the graph of the function right there. So all of these points are on this line right here. Okay, so this one's points, this one's a straight line because it's talking about all real numbers right there, f of x. 
All right, so let's answer a few questions and then we'll wrap it up. So what information do we need to write a uh, recursive rule for an, uh, an arithmetic sequence that we do not need to write uh, with an arithmetic sequence? Okay, well, we need the first term in a recursive rule, but we don't need that in the explicit rule, okay? We always need it in a recursive rule. Everything depends on the term before that in a recursive rule. Suppose we want to be able to, to, to determine the 90th term of an arithmetic sequence, and we have both an explicit and recursive rule. Well, what should we use and explain? Well, definitely the explicit rule, because it gives us that nice formula, and we can just substitute in 90 into the equation. If we use the recursive rule, we've got to start with the first term and do the second term and the third term, because every... Every term depends on the term before that, so we'd have to go all the way out to the 90, 90th term and get the 89th term, and before we get the 89th term, we'd have to anyways. When you do that, there's a lot more, you can get there, just a lot more room for calculation there. So definitely, if you have an explicit rule, that's the formula to just plug in 90. Okay, let's move this other question up a little bit, and we'll read it up. So. Uh, the explicit equation for an arithmetic sequence and a linear equation have similar forms, okay? So how is the value of m in the linear equation, y equals mx plus b, remember that, uh, uh, similar to the value of d in the explicit equation right here, okay? So how is this m in this equation related to this d right here? Well, they both are, they represent rate of change, you guys, but m is, uh, represents slope, and it's a constant change. But remember the formula y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1? That's m. So it's the constant change in y over the constant change in x. But d represents a constant change in just the consecutive terms of a sequence. There is no graph or a slope of a line. They're just numbers in a sequence right there. All right, you guys, if you are in my class, I would assign that for your homework. And hey, if you guys can, would you guys click like on this video? Thanks a lot, you guys. Take care.